Is Killer Clowns from Outer Space a good addition to the horror asim genre? In a word, yes, I think so. Now you can stop watching the video and come back for the next one. But if you're curious about my early impressions of this game after playing it for a few hours on opening day, let's talk about it. If you're new here, my name is The Crow Show. I'm a Dead by Daylight content creator, and thank you very much for clicking on my video. I hope you enjoy your stay. Before we dive any further, I do want to say this up front. This is not a direct comparison to anything else. The goal of this video is just to talk about the gameplay and just overall feedback feel of killer clowns from outer space and we'll talk about whether i think it's worth it right up front this is a very pricey game it's 40 dollars us this game has crossplay in-game voice comms so it's quick and easy to jump into a round there are a total of 10 players in each lobby three clowns seven humans when you join a lobby you cannot choose which role you play in that sense i think it'll keep this game super fun and refreshing this mechanic borrows a page from the Friday the 13th ASIM game, and many have already made comparisons to Friday the 13th. There are multiple ways to escape, humans can fight back with various weapons and tools they find, and there's a lot of RNG when humans are looting. Humans will find an assortment of items like energy drinks, hamburgers, popsicles, bricks, tennis balls, pistols, shotguns, and air horns, among other things. And each of these weapons and items do various things, like they'll give humans more stamina, they'll get their health back, stuff like that. They, they can be very, very useful. The energy drink in particular is one of my favorites. Now, depending on your loadout after you loot up, you can be a well-equipped fighter or you can find the objective kind of items like spark plugs or keys or fuel so that you can get closer towards one of the various ways of escaping. That's another way this game will draw comparisons to Friday the 13th. There are multiple ways humans can escape. In order to achieve your objective, Humans have the ability to communicate through voice comms or a communication wheel to ask their teammates to follow them, retreat, etc. The various ways to communicate in-game has potential to make this a strong point of the game. I'll show some footage here of me running into a really funny, entertaining Xbox player with a microphone. Unfortunately, after a driver update, my NVIDIA Shadow Play reset my microphone settings so you can't hear my side of the conversation. Oh, right here, right here. Hey, little, little munchkin. Come here, daddy. Come on, come on. Don't know what's about to hit him. Don't know what's about to hit you, dumbass bitch. Get off of him, get off. Bitch! <laughs> Give me another hamburger. Crow's coming in clutch. I need this fucking hamburger in front of your face. Oh shit. Oh shit, dude. Fucking cooking. Bitch! Oh shit, I'm cooking these motherfuckers. Get the fuck away from me. Fucking clown. Get away from me. Get away. Yeah, pluck his ass. Pluck his ass. Damn! Get in there, boy! Eight seconds. Eight seconds. Get your ass in there. Get your ass in there, Chris. Get in there, Chris. Oh my god, it's coming, Chris. No, you're fucking up. <gasps> oh my god. That's a motherfucker. Yeah. Now, I died early in the round, but because my friend was so funny and active on the microphone, I stayed playing those mini games and I was equipping him with burgers and the weapon near the end there. And he kept thanking me. He's like, yo, Crow, you're coming in clutch. And it's kind of funny. Like, I think maybe, and I'm speculating here, but you could tell my friend was kind of doing the ASMR thing and lowering the voice. And I'm guessing they probably had to keep it down for roommates or child, spouse, partner, what have you. But that just kind of made it a little bit more fun. Getting back to the little mini games, after you die as human, you can play mini games in order to get items to your teammates that are still in the fight. The items can range from bricks to energy drinks to even escape items like a key card or spark plugs. 
I appreciate that Ilphonic has added mini game mechanics so you can assist your teammates that are still in the game. I just hope it's enough to keep people in the game because it can be super helpful. There were many times when I was playing when a random dead teammate would give me a timely burger to get my health back or some kind of weapon so that I wasn't completely naked and afraid. Let's quickly talk about the combat in this game. One day into the game and players are already calling for a nerf to the clown's popcorn gun. It's a ranged attack with devastating results. Up close it can take humans down really fast and from range it's still pretty strong. I don't want to get too deep into meta gameplay commentary and balance changes that we need already, but it can be pretty deflating to watch your health meter diminish super quickly because you ran into a clown equipped with a popcorn gun. The humans aren't totally defenseless though. You can complete some fun combos with your teammates or by yourself. You can stun clowns with the air horn or a brick and then whack the clown with your bats, your stick or other weapons until they fall to the ground. And you'll usually need a sharp object or a pistol in order to break their nose, which kills the clown, and the clown respawns after about 45 seconds. Which side is more fun? That'll be up to anyone playing. Personally, I had a lot more fun with the clown side. I definitely felt more powerful than the humans, and in a one-on-one -on -one situation, depending on the human's loadout, the clown has a big advantage. Clown weapons are infinite. You're only limited by your stamina meter, which you must monitor, and if the human has an energy drink or two, can make it really tough to get that distance you need in order to finish a chase and either kill them or put them in a cocoon. You can also use a special power to refill your stamina meter and your attacks get much stronger as well. In that respect, I do have a lot of fun managing the timing of your special powers and you know, running out of your special powers when you're in a fight it can be pretty costly as clown. So it's fun trying to find that balance. The game isn't without its flaws. I did run into some FPS issues. If you're a fiend like me for FPS, like frames per second, you know, keep an eye on the top right hand corner of my screen and my frames per second were pretty low. There were multiple times when I was playing as human trying to throw a brick at the clowns and I swear my frame rate went down to like 15 frames per second while throwing the brick. It made it a less than ideal gameplay experience, made it very frustrating. Uh, again, this is the first day. Well, I guess it's one week early we're playing this game. Uh, hopefully future patches will clean that up. I also ran into a really annoying bug where I could still hear somebody's microphone despite muting everybody. I'll just give you a little dose of what that was like. I'll leave it there. I'll keep it very brief. I did go through and mute every single person in the lobby, but that sound still played for the remainder of the round. I think this game has a lot of potential, and especially since you can have 10 people in a lobby, if you have a community that can support it, if you're a content creator, streamer, YouTuber, what have you, you can get some really fun open lobby nights going, which I think will bring people closer together. I'll have a good time. I don't think you'll regret it. And a big thanks to Volpixia for posting this on Twitter earlier. When you're playing in the custom rounds with your friends, you do get experience points, which I think is a really great feature. I hope they keep it. Is it worth the $40 price tag? Uh, personally, I think it should come down in price a little bit. I don't see that happening, but it is a very hefty price tag, and I think will keep a lot of people from playing this game. So if you're on the fence about it, maybe just watch some streams and wait for some patches to go through so that Ilphonic can polish up the game. And one last comment I wanted to make, this is a video game based on a movie. And I think this one has a lot of potential for some movie-like moments. I'll leave you with this little clip where we were going to make a very easy escape on the boat, uh, but things kind of went sideways. So if you watch this video, thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy this scene where everything went wrong. And you know what? I didn't mind a single bit. I was giggling.
Thank <laughs> you.